Welcome to the one and only video number 53, maybe? In this video, we're gonna be talking about how we can expand on our custom use fetch hook to now work with a post request, which this is going to be a bit different because we don't want this to execute immediately on page load. Instead, we want it to execute when we click a button, which is actually a little bit more complicated. So there's probably a bunch of different ways of doing this. I thought of one after doing some research, I think this is probably one of the better ways of doing it but I'm sure there are others out there. So if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comment section below. So let's just take a look at what we have and why this is not going to work with our current setup. Here we have our customer's component. And in here, we are invoking our custom hook use fetch. We're passing in the URL and anything else we want to be added to that request. If you wanted to mimic this behavior down on this button click, Below, you can see we have this add customer component, which is taking a function called new customer. Taking a look at that code, we have it commented out. So you might think to copy this behavior up here from our use fetch and just modify it to instead of having a get method, having a post method. And this would allow us to add data. We'll see what the problem is here shortly. Let's go ahead and replace this content with our use fetch and without even changing anything we can take a look at the browser and you can see react hook use fetch is called in function new customer that is neither a react function component nor a custom react hook function essentially what this means is you're not allowed to do this the solution is to actually instead of having the use fetch return the data we can have it return a function which can then be invoked on button click so basically what we can do is we can create a function inside our use effect call it something like append data because this is going to add to state. This is the function that's going to then be returned from use fetch. So it's a little bit to wrap your mind around. So let's just jump in and try to get something working and we'll just build as we go. It might not be perfect from the start, but by the end of this video, we should have the ability to add customers to our list. So what it's supposed to look like is you click the button, a modal pops up, you can type in data, hit save and then that data automatically shows up on the page. The ability to add that data to our state is still going to happen inside of our new customer function. It's just going to look a little bit different. Instead of doing the use fetch here, we're just going to invoke a function. We'll just assume it's called append data. And then going off of these parameters here, we can describe what it's supposed to look like by creating an object name is name industry is industry. So we get to this point and we have the object with a name and industry. Now we just have to define this append data. This is still going to come from use fetch, which is here. And you can see right now we're returning the customers and the error status. This is now going to return a few other things. So we're going to add request here. This is going to be the original function to get the data. So what we currently have, and then we're also going to have the new append data. So we will define both the original request, which we already have in use fetch here, and the new append data as functions that'll be returned from use fetch. So let's go ahead and console log these values to see if we get anything on this page. So we will have request and append data as well as the customers and the error status. So now we have four things that we're going to get from use fetch. I'll save, it'll do a bit of a reformat. And the way we currently have use fetch is it'll execute what will be this request function immediately. So if we take a look at, at the use fetch, we have a use effect that just executes the fetch right away. Now, instead of executing it right away, we're not gonna do that. And instead we're going to define this as a function. So we'll say function request and this request function is going to execute the fetch. So let's go ahead and close this function down below. We'll get rid of the dependency array. We're not going to need that. And there we go. So now we have a function that described the original behavior of our application. And now we can define a second function to append data. So let's go after this function here and we'll say function append data. This will take the new data, which is the object we passed in, and we will define the new fetch here. 
However, let's just take a break and define a checkpoint with a console log and get everything wired up. So let's just say inside append data and then we will have the new data here. So now that we have these two functions, we have append data and the original request, we can return these from use fetch. So here we're returning data and some other stuff. We will return request, append data, and we're no longer going to return this set data because all that behavior is going to be done inside of this use fetch. Let's take a look at our site now. You can see it's not loading our customers. However, we're not getting any major issues in the console. In fact, the function that's being returned is being displayed from that use effect. So we have the first function, which is request, and then we have the second function, which is append data. This console log is coming from the customers page inside of this use effect, request and append data. So we've returned these functions, but the request isn't actually being made and no customers are being displayed. So before we go ahead and build the behavior to append data, let's first fix the original functionality with this new structure. All we really gotta do is invoke that request function we just defined on page load. So we will have a use effect with an empty dependency array, and this will execute once on initial page load. So here we are over in our code, and we have this use effect to console log all of the state. I'm going to keep that separate because that will show any state changes. I'm gonna have a new use effect here, and this one's going to have the empty dependency array, so it only executes once. And now, inside of here, we can just invoke request. This should do the trick, so now when the page loads, we'll invoke that function that comes from use fetch, and you can see all of our trash data shows up on the page. <laughs> so we've refactored our code, it works the same way, but now it's returning a function that can be called. We can do the same exact thing on button click to invoke the new append data function. So it should already be pretty much wired up because we have this new customer function being invoked, which is invoking the append data function. This will pass in this object here, and it'll console log it right here. So what that means is when we click add customer and then hit add again, we get that in the console inside append data with the blank information we didn't type in here. So far so good. So the information is being received inside of append data. Now we just have to define the behavior to add to this list here. So let's go back to our code and we will redefine this function. So we'll say fetch. This is still going to use the URL that's passed in all the way up here. So we don't need to redefine with const. And then we'll say dot then, dot then, and dot catch. So let's first work on this here where we're going to have another object defined here. This will have method being post the headers being any headers that were passed in, and the body being json.stringify, and passing in this new data object. This was passed in as an argument to this parameter here. Now we will go to the next then here, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the response code. So if response.status is 401, then what we're going to do is navigate to login. And this is going to look very similar to what we have up here. So we'll copy this and we'll just replace what we have down here. Paste. And now what we will do is we will add a general catch all. So if a response is not okay, we will throw the response.status and that's going to go to set error status. So we'll just do the catch right here real quick. So we will define it as E. And for now we can console log it just so we can see that easily. Console log E, set error status to E. All right, so that's good. Now let's figure out what happens if everything actually is working. So if we get to this point, we can return response.json which will then come down here to this then. And I'm going to say data, but then I realize, you know, this state is called data. So I'm actually going to rename this parameter to just D. 
and we'll just make a checkpoint in console log D and I'm just going to say in the then just so we can find this easily. All right, so let's see what happens. We'll save and let's run. So let's go ahead and type something in here. Google computing, we'll hit add. So it returns an object with a property customer. Going into this, you can see that item here. So basically we wanna take this object and append it to this list of data. Now, I am really designing this with the customers page in mind. However, it's pretty general at this point. We haven't mentioned customers inside of our use fetch. So let's try to keep it general and not actually say, hey, let's navigate into the customer property as then this is only going to be useful for customer data. So if you wanted to repeat this behavior with some other page, well, it's not gonna work as well because you're going to be using the wrong property names. So instead what we could do is we could just grab the property without using its name. So we could just say, hey, let's grab whatever this is, whatever it might be called. The way you can do that is by saying object.values, pass in the object and grab the property with index zero. So just save that, let's try it again. Google computing, hit enter, and now we just have the object without the property. This is what we can use to append to the list in the state. So let's just take a quick moment to look at the state as it is. We'll console log it and see how we can append this object to the state. So what we're gonna do is instead of just console logging this new data, I actually want to console log data, which is the state. So when we submit another value, this is the data that's submitted but our state is not actually an array. It's an object with a property that is an array. And that's the way it's returned from the API and use fetch doesn't do anything to remove that property. So you could modify the way the state is being stored to store it as an array instead of an object with an array in it. But this is basically a similar problem where we can't just push this object into the state because the state is not an array, it's an object. So instead we want to grab the array of data without using the property name so that it can stay general. So thinking generally is pretty complicated. We pretty much want to say, hey, take this object and add it to the array that's inside of whatever the property is called without actually saying that property name. So we're going to do something very similar as to what we did here, we did object.values passing in the new data. We're gonna do that same thing for the existing data. So what we would do is say object.values pass in data, which is our state, grab that array and say push passing in this here. So just for simplicity, let's go ahead and assign it to a variable. We'll say const submitted. So this is the new data and this is going to be object.values d index zero. And now we can replace any of these lines with submitted. Similarly here, we're going to pass in submitted. So this should push that new object into that array, but if you remember that we've talked about before, you're not supposed to modify the state directly. You always use set state. So how can we do the same exact behavior, but inside of a set data instead of using push. Well, I personally think the easiest way of doing this is to actually create a new object. So we'll say const new state. This is going to take all of the properties from the current state. And then what we can do is we could append to that new state instead of the actual state. Since new state is just a normal variable, it's totally fine to push the data onto it. Then all you have to do is say set data and pass in the new state. So this is really complicated, so let's just test it out on the site. So let's just do a refresh and let's go ahead and add a customer. And this time we will go with Uber and the industry is going to be ride sharing. We we'll hit add. You can see that data shows up in the list immediately without a page refresh. Now we will have to have it so that this closes on a success, 
but let's just go through this code one more time since it's a little bit complicated. First thing is we grab the object that is being added to the array. We duplicate the existing state, which is going to be a new object in memory, and then we push the new object onto that new state, and we replace the existing state with that new object. Now, because this is a new object, it's seen as a state change. If you were just changing the properties of an object and one of those properties was an array, the actual object reference where it is in memory wouldn't change, so it wouldn't be seen as a state change. This is what causes the page to re-render and the data to show up on our page immediately. Last thing we need to do is just make this go away. So let's go ahead and remove these console logs and see if there's any other ones I want to get rid of. I'll keep the cache there for now. Uh, we'll save. Let's go back to the customers and we'll just check to see if there's an error. So if there's no error status, then we will toggle show. So let's test it out. Test, testing, hit enter. It shows up and the modal goes away. Now you can just clean up all your console logs so you're not polluting the console with a bunch of garbage. So let's go up and just comment this console log out or just comment this whole use effect out. And this old use effect, we're not gonna need that anymore. So I'm just going to delete that. So basically what we're doing is we're building a library of functionality that we can use for multiple pages or multiple applications, but it's complicated. So you have to probably try this out with some other pages and make sure that it's general enough to work with other types of data and you can customize this however you need. There's still the possibility to expand on this to do deleting and updating data, you know, probably various other things as well, like logging in or whatever it may be. But I decided I'm just going to end it there and leave that to you. If you want to continue building on this use fetch, you can as some practice. But what we're gonna do is we're just going to end there and leave all the other fetches as they are since our application is working. But there's one thing that we did break, and that is the definition search, which was using use fetch as well. So now when you search a term, it just doesn't work. So if we want to refactor our definition real quick, we'll go into definition. We will first alter what things we care about. Specifically, we want the request function. And now let's create a use effect that'll just execute that for us. Since we don't have a button, we'll say request and now it works so very little refactoring needed in our other pages so this video was kind of insane and it's totally okay if you didn't memorize 100 percent of that go through it again if you wish if you ever feel like you might want to build this use fetch library of functionality then you'll probably want to understand this code fairly well. Writing code in a general way is difficult and wouldn't be surprised if there's some bugs in the code wrote in this video. So don't trust it with your life. Definitely test it out and see what you can do. If you want to support this channel, be sure to subscribe and check out that next video. Peace out.